Spring is a great time of year for those people who've had compost piles to get their compost piles started. It's also a great time of year for those wanting compost piles to start it. This episode we're going to talk about the ingredients that need to go into a compost pile and it's really simple. We break the ingredients that go into a compost pile into two areas, green and brown. Green's nitrogen and brown's carbon. So what we have here of course is a pile that's mostly brown, carbon. So we have some high quality chicken manure that we're going to add to it. And in general, we want to add one part green, one part nitrogen to 30 parts carbon. It's really important that we stir that in good. As things green up and we start mowing our lawns, gathering leaves, pulling weeds out of the garden, we can add that green to this pile as we go. There's a great publication on the University of Wyoming Extension website called Backyard Composting that you can find. Composting is a great way to get rid of unwanted organic matter that we can then add back to our gardens as needed fertilizer. Tune in next week and we'll talk about the management strategies that we'll employ in the compost pile. This is Hudson Hill, University of Wyoming Extension. You're watching from the ground up. So last time I was talking about the ingredients that you can start a compost pile with in the spring. Now I want to talk really about how we manage the compost pile. When I teach people about a compost pile, I really want to talk to them about the fact that they now have millions of pets that we call microbes. So last week we talked about how to feed them. Now today we really want to talk about how to take care of them. The first thing we do with a pet is give it exercise. And that's what we do by stirring the pile. The kind of microbes that we want living in this pile are aerobic, oxygen-loving microbes. Things like putting lateral stuff in there and burying it up might help oxygen come in. I've even seen people drill holes in PVC and put that down into the pile to help oxygen go down into the pile. But most important, we really probably need to stir that pile at least once a week. Anybody that's composted in Wyoming knows that our cold winters usually shut our piles off. They stop those microbes from working. But in the summertime, they stop because they get too dry. We've got to keep these microbes in an environment where they can live. We've got to keep our compost pile moist. We're probably going to have to water at least once a week in the summertime. The rule of thumb that I like to go by is when we pick that compost up, we want it to feel icky icky enough that we want to put it down, but then it doesn't stick to our hands. Kind of like a wet sponge. Again, there's a great publication on UW Extension's website called Backyard Composting. This is Hudson Hill, University of Wyoming Extension. You're watching From the Ground Up. So I started batch number one about a week ago. It's gotten up to 130 and now it's dying down to 80 degrees. I started batch two about maybe five days ago. That's up to 95 now. And then I started this batch about four days ago. It's up to 130. And I'm gonna add these orange peels and carrot grinds that I got from a local Jamba Juice to that pile in layers. So I'm going to do about a three inch layer and then I'm going to add some compost from compost pile number two which is a combination of grass clippings and leaves. And then I'm going to repeat the process by adding another layer of carrot grinds and orange peels. After two or three days I'm going to stir the compost, add water, check the temp, record the information. In about a month or two, this should be black gold. Hi, we're here to talk about 
composting and mulching your leaves on your own property rather than having the village cart them off. A couple of reasons for this. One are, are uh, tax costs. The other one is that it's a valuable commodity to keep on your property. Um, initially, you'd like to reduce the volume of the pile of leaves you have. If you can run them over with a mulching mower or uh, through a shredder, you will reduce them by a factor of 10. So 10 bags becomes one. Uh, Mark right now is going to demonstrate how to, how to reduce this pile here. Mark. This is what a mulching mower looks like. It has a flap on the output that actually keeps all the uh, leaves material grass also inside under the deck so it gets chopped up over and over again. At the result here you'll see that the pile is much much smaller. You'll also see that it's far finer. This increases the surface area to enable the, uh, the uh, organisms which, uh, which uh, activate the decomposition to uh, move faster. So we'll take this, this material and we'll put it into our three bin composter which is easily constructed of discarded pallets. The reason there are three bins is because the bin I just I just uh, deposited into is the active one. That's the only place I put new material. Once it's full, I move on and I find that this material here is ready for use in my garden. I'll remove this, use it in my garden, and now I'll have another empty bin. The bin you see here in the middle is kind of in between. It's probably a month or two into the process. You'll see that it's moist, and generally speaking, you'll see earthworms in here, but there are other organisms that you can't see. What you've got when you're finished, it's uh, partly a fertilizer, but very much a, a soil conditioner. There are a lot of trace minerals in here that are, are difficult to acquire any other way. So what you've, what, what you've done is you've taken something that fell into your yard by, uh, by a natural process and you're going to return it to your own, own property, your gardens, your beds, your, uh, your lawn. If you want to uh, utilize the, uh, the, the uh, reduced leaves, the, uh, the mowed leaves, this stuff is great for mulching beds. Just put it right on, on your flower beds. It's going to protect them from uh, variations in temperature. It'll also protect them from variations in moisture. It holds moisture. Some folks just run the mower over dry leaves on the lawn and let the, let the mulch stay in place. The tool that I use to compost my leaves, it's not required, but something I find very helpful, is a leaf shredder. This is what it basically it's a weed whacker in a tube, and it serves multiple purposes. It takes leaves, it reduces the bulk from 10 to 1. You're going to see this magnitude of leaves shredded down, and you'll see the end result. So it takes the same amount of leaves, and you, leave, you use much, much less space to compost them. And also, by the way, not everybody needs one of these. You don't need to use them. You only use them a few days a year. So it's a great tool to share with neighbors to go into a joint purchase. You don't need to put a bag underneath it, but I put a bag underneath it to catch it. Put a few in. You don't want too big of a twig. Turn it on. So I've, I've done shredding the bag of leaves, and in the shredding bag, this is what it looks like. So as a comparison, what I've done is I've taken the leaves from the shred bag and put them back into the original bag so you can see the comparison of the reduction of bulk. As I mentioned before, this three bin composter was made from readily available free materials. But you needn't even take up this much space in your yard. If, if you'd like, a, a simple pile right next to your hammock works just as well. 
if somewhat slower. Uh, some, some folks use four fence posts with a piece of chicken wire around and just fill it up. Essentially it should be three by three, three feet by three feet or uh, five feet by five feet, somewhere in that neighborhood in order to have the critical mass of uh, moisture and temperature that's necessary for uh, accelerated decomposition. Pallets are available at most building suppliers. This particular uh, group came from uh, a plumbing supply outfit nearby here. This, the back pallet is about eight feet long, probably used transport bathtubs or something like this. These ones are normal four foot by four foot. I stand one up on either end and two in the middle and that gives me three bins. You might need someone to help help you hold them still while you complete this phase. Plain old bailing wire, ready, readily uh, available at the hardware store. Just loop it through, twist it, and then with a pair of pliers or nippers, just tighten it right up. Snip that off, grab a hold of it, pull it tight, and then twist it. Just twist till it won't go anymore. If you keep twisting, you'll break it, but if you break it, just get another piece of wire. Wire's cheap. Okay, cut off the loose ends so there's nothing sharp, and tap that down. Continue that, that way through the other four pallets. You can do it top and bottom, and there you have your uh, practically free three bin composter. You have a holding bin for your leaves, a whole leaf or chopped leaf. It needs some moisture like all living things. This is an active biological process, so it's going to need some water, it's going to need air. So the whole leaves will mat down and it will, the process will take a long time. That's why we chop it to do a more surface area. Uh, it will be easier to aerate when it doesn't mat down. <coughs> and we have, uh, Francis will demonstrate uh, an aerator. As the leaves are wet and they possibly start to mat, you don't want the anaerobic event to occur. You want to keep it aerobic. And there he is, aerating his pile. Okay, so to speed up your compost and uh, to get the uh, finest quality, it's good to periodically uh, turn it and get, uh, you turn it over so what's in the middle comes to the surface. You're also getting air into the middle of the compost pile, which helps it uh, stay hot and active. Hi, I'm Danny with Yard to Table Gardens, and I'm talking with you today about compost tea. Um, compost tea is a really great way to boost your soil's health. It's a way of brewing beneficial bacteria that will protect your plants, make them stronger, bring nutrients to them. They do a whole host of things um, and we really want to encourage microbial life in our soil. So the first thing you need to do is get yourself some rainwater. So with this very simple rainwater system that I've set up um, at my home, which is pretty inexpensive, just some 55 gallon food grade barrels strung together with some basic plumbing parts and 10 feet of gutter. Um, I'm able to catch about 300 gallons each season of rain and then over the summer season we'll use it to water the garden and keep the soil microbes alive. Um, so we have rainwater, and the reason that's important is because it's not chlorinated. So here's our bucket of rainwater, and inside I've got, um, this is my my uh, aerator and it's just like the kind you would put um, inside a fish tank to, to aerate it and I've weighed it down at the bottom with a piece of broken terracotta pot. Um, we want the water to, we want the aerators to stay at the bottom of the water. So, um, and what that's going to do is it's going to breed the beneficial bacteria. So there are two types of bacteria. There's anaerobic 
which don't like oxygen, and there's aerobic bacteria, which need an oxygen-rich environment. And we're going to encourage the growth of aerobic bacteria that are good for our garden, rather than anaerobic bacteria, which can kill our garden. Uh, so the way we're going to do that is we've got some compost, and we're going to use about a cup of compost, and so here's my measuring cup. Um, and you can also use worm castings from a worm bin if you have a vermiculture system set up. Um, they tend to be higher in bacteria because the worms break down the food scraps without using um, thermophilic decomposition or heat. So in a normal compost, if it's done correctly, the heat will actually end up killing the bacteria that are doing the work to break it down about halfway through the decomposition process. Um, so use a little bit less castings if you're going to do worm castings, but they're really great. Um, I don't have a worm bin at the moment, so I'm just going to use my normal compost. So I'm going to measure out about a cup, and I'm putting these in straight rather than in some sort of a, a, a sack. But if you want to use a sprayer to spray your compost tea, um, you can put them in like a, a foot of old nylons or old tights um, and then just stick them in the, in the water like that as if it's a tea bag. I'm just going to do some loose leaf tea brewing here. So there's our compost, all of our little microbes, and then we're going to give them some food. So molasses is my favorite. Any basic sugar um, will do the trick. So if you have some honey or if you have some just refined sugar, that also works. Unsulfured molasses, um, make sure it's unsulfured and you know as close to natural molasses as unprocessed as it can get. Um, so we're going to put about a third a cup or a quarter cup of molasses in there and that's going to take just a second to come out of the bottle. Um, so then the other important thing is that when you make compost tea, it can only brew for between 24 to 48 hours. After that time, the, the microbes begin to die, the food supply runs out, and that, that uh, high death rate can encourage uh, anaerobic bacteria to begin to produce, uh, even if it's still bubbling. So it's really important that you get this onto your garden within uh, that time period. So we're just going to add the molasses, kind of rinse it off in there and try and get the rest of it. Um, it's kind of cold out, so it's a little stuck, that molasses in February. Um, but So now we're going to let it brew. I'm just going to let it sit out here for about 24 hours and then I'm going to take it to the community garden and we're going to put it on our crops right around dusk. It's best to put the microbes on the soil um, either early in the morning or right before the sun sets um, or right after the sun sets. They don't like the sun and can die pretty quickly if they get dried out. So giving them a chance, a good shot at getting down into the soil before it gets dried out is really important. Uh, so that's it. Do this once a season and your garden will do great. Carl Munson here with the very first Hannah's Rangers video. And part of what we're doing with Hannah's Rangers here at Hannah's at Seal Hay. Excuse me, do you mind me making a video here? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, recycling, reusing, and reducing is one of our projects and uh, as you can see in front of us here we've got some uh, pallets which are an amazing um, well they're reusable of course and probably people who like to reuse them hate to see this going on but uh, we're re repurposing some pallets into a compost heap and that's what I'm going to show you with this video uh, never done this in this style before you can of course put four pallets together and you've made a very primitive compost heap but I'm going to do something a little bit more sophisticated what I've used is a table frame, which uh, was on our scrap heap. It's a little bit rusty, but that doesn't matter so much for a compost heap. When you first see it, you think you might use it that way around, but then I thought, why not use it this way around? And if you very carefully pull a pallet apart, you can actually reuse the nails as well, but you're gonna end up with something a little bit like this. In fact, if I 
tip it over, you'll see how you can build up the levels of your compost bin a little bit like that. And I have a cunning plan for fastening the pieces of timber to the frame, which we'll come back to in just a little while. Hello again. Right, okay, sorry, just got distracted by the cat there. Um, we are building a compost heap using this old table frame and a dismantled pallet. As you can see, I've dismantled a pallet. And um, I have two pieces I've cut here. If you want to come a bit closer? <clears throat> and you can see there's two notches at the bottom. And uh, this is my <laughs> um, idea now for the front, because in the front of a compost heap, you need to build a slatted access. And uh, so I'm just popping those on there like that. Eventually, there'll be a batten at the front and the back and the slats can just drop in at the front there so you can build your compost heap up. But this very quick way of putting that side on, I'm gonna use a cable tie, pop that through there, and then feed it back again. So this can all come apart very easily as well. And just tie that on like that. And obviously the same for all six fixings. And you're gonna end up then with two front pillars and a little bit of a clue on the side here. So this will be the back. I can start thinking of a similar way to pin the sides on like that as well. So when I've fixed the other post on and started building the sides, we'll come back and show you that a little bit later. Right, as you can see, it's core ever clock. So it's very dangerous to build things while you're drinking. <coughs> some friends have turned up and brought some beer. So we're gonna have to, um, I'll just explain this last section and then we'll start again in the morning because you can see the lights fading as well. The uh, shadows have become rather long here. But if you come on over a little bit, I'll show you what I've been doing. You could just zoom in on this bit here, green fingered goddess. You see this, this side here where the two slats are gonna be and the front slats for uh, building up the front. That's halfway on the frame. And at the back here, that's sat with a little uh, off cut here. Right. So that, oh, munch me. <coughs> we can put some pieces of timber across there. It's gonna be a little bit longer. I mean, that would work. But if we make it a little bit longer, then we can screw that into there. And then on the side here, uh, with these front and back, you can just put a top in like that and then space these out as you wish. It's starting to come together. One more piece in there and you've got a side. So we'll probably start again in the morning. Look at that beautiful Devon sunset. It's no, not no, coming out at all. It's um, oh, I see, right. white. Fade into the sunset. <laughs> oh, there we go. What do you think of that? We're not at a cut there. It's quarter of a clock. Cut. Fabulous. Right, we are back making our compost bin. Do you want to come in a bit closer, green fingered goddess? And um, you can see we have cut the pallet wood to, this is the back. And um, just a very quick section here, just to show you that the back is coming together. And um, got my young assistant here. And you can see that as well as using recycled wood from pallets, Ladies, if you've ever wondered, slightly sexist I know, but if you've ever wondered why your chap or dad keeps a box of screws because they might be handy one day, that day has come. Look at this, <laughs> look at this, I haven't had to buy a single screw. I've, I must have saved about five pence here <laughs> and I've got a different type of screw. It's like the museum of old screws. We could probably show people that, screws from throughout the ages. Some of those have been in there since the 80s. So I'm really pleased to have been able to recycle the screws. We'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to do the sides and then slap the front in the next couple of sections. <laughs> right, um, so here's a rare glimpse. I haven't changed and transformed, <laughs> um, but the green finger goddess has come from behind the camera just to show you... Um, well, I don't want to be patronising. I want to like say, oh, it's, it's so easy, even the green fingered goddess can do it. But what do you think of the project so far? Yeah, it's really strong. It's good because um, we're able to reuse this old tabletop, um, which would have just gone into refuse. Um, refuse. Refuse. 
okay. So this is um, really strengthened it. Um, I really like it. So we've got a side on. And we'll do the other side and then we'll be back to okay. show the detail of the slatted front. Yeah? Yeah, it's really cool. I like it. There she comes, it. there she comes, look at that. <laughs> Perfect. We'll be back in a little while. Right, okay, the sun is setting on this project. Um, we've lost the green fingered goddess. I'm going to stop this for a minute so I can turn the camera around so you can see the sunset I'm talking about. Look at that, that's the beautiful sunset here in South Devon. And it, the sun is setting on this construction project here of a compost heap made with pallets. Let's get it into focus. Oh my goodness. Ah, there we go. And Digby the Wonder Boy is here as well. What do you think with his sword that we made too? Okay. And uh, let's show you the detail here. Um, we put in these two uprights here. And that's where the front of the compost heap slides in like that an off cut from a much bigger piece of wood like that which you saw down and then you see the front of the compost heap just goes in like that just got to saw a few more of those and we're done but um, there you go that is a compost heap made with the um, an upturned table base a metal table base a um, couple of cable ties to hold it all together pallet wood and loads of old screws that I've saved for years that have finally become useful. Last word to the boy wonder, what did you think of that project? Hey, I'm Matthew Wilson with Worms Etc. Today we're going to go over the basics of setting up a worm compost system. Um, we can use something as simple as this cheap plastic tub, widely available. Uh, you may even have one that you can uh, use that you're not using for anything else. Or you could use uh, something like a worm in. Um, this is a neat compost system and I'll uh, make a video of how to set one of these up in the future. But for today we're going to go over um, setting a compost system up in a bin like this. Alright, here's the basic, uh, some of the basic stuff we use for bedding. We have some old uh, egg crates, we've got some cardboard which has been shredded up. Uh, we've got some old office paper here that we can use. Um, we have some old uh, potting soil or uh, peat moss. It's best to use uh, old potting soil for this as it has less, the fertilizer has already been leached out if it's used. Okay. Alright, for the egg crates, we're just going to tear these up into small little bits and uh, the worms will finish it from there. Now for the office paper, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to tear it into uh, small little pieces and uh, the worms will finish it off. It don't have to be real small or consistent. The main thing is just to break it up into smaller little bits. And for the cardboard, I cheated and uh, I've got a machine which uh, shreds it up into this nice little uh, fine stuff for me. We use this for bedding here. Um, a lot and we also use it as a ship fill to uh, ship the worms with it. It's a wonderful insulator and keeps the worms cool or warm during transit, whichever it needs to be for the season. Okay, and now we have our materials here shredded up and ready to go into our worm bin. We have our egg crates, we have our uh, shredded up office paper and some cardboard. If you had some other stuff you could use like shredded newspaper that would work uh, well also. And here in our plastic tub, we've already placed our cardboard. Um, I'm also going to add to that the uh, shredded uh, office paper um, and the uh, egg crates as well. And also I want to throw in some peat moss too. This is uh, used um, uh, potting soil, but it contains mostly peat moss, which some worms happen to love. And now we're just going to take this and we're going to kind of stir it up a little bit. But we're not too worried about it because we still have to add water. Okay, and also to help get everything off to a quicker start, this isn't necessary, but it does seem to help. Um, I have a bag of worm starter, which is just uh, the uh, bedding substrate and uh, some worms and some eggs from one of our bins. Um, if you add it into it and uh, mix it up, uh, you see there's actually a good many worms in this one, but uh, there's a good many eggs too, which would be hard to see on camera. But um, 
there's an egg right there um, and uh, we're just going to mix this up into there real good and now we're going to add water um, we want it so that we can squeeze a uh, few drops of water out of it. Now I'm not talking about like a death grip squeeze. I'm just going to light squeeze and one or two drops of water come out of it when we're done. You're going to find the top's going to get wet real quick when you're watering it, but the bottom will still be dry. So you'll have to stir it up a few times. And uh, we're using just the cheap plastic tub here, which works fine, except for it doesn't have um, all the holes for aeration like a commercial unit would which is okay we just don't want it very deep um it is going to have to be a little bit shallower that is the bedding we don't want it like this full or air would never reach the bottom but as long as we keep it shallower and uh add just a little bit of food at a time we'll be okay and now here we have our bag of worms which we're going to add to the uh composter this is our this is our motor or our engine of the composter so to speak and all we're going to do is we're going to take the bag of worms and we're just going to set it out on top and uh, they will work themselves down uh, without us covering them up or anything and this is about a minute and a half after we put them in there you can see they're already starting to bury themselves down um, they uh, they move into the substrate really quick um, now that we got our worms set up in there, uh, we're not going to add any, I, I wouldn't suggest adding any food to it for a couple of days. Um, I will make another video here shortly on what to feed them and how much to feed them and how and all that sort of stuff. But uh, they'll eat this cardboard and stuff for a couple of days and uh, be just happy with that. And after the worms have worked themselves down, I would leave the lid off for uh, at least a few hours uh, with a light on them. That way they can orientate themselves. But uh, after that time, you can put a lid on it. It'll help keep it more moist, more moist and, and whatnot. And we just drilled a few holes in our lids and uh, to let air circulate. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it.